Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about questions and answers for getting a license. For those of you going and preparing for your road test, you're pretty excited and you probably have a few questions about the road test and what you're going to need to do for the purposes of the road test. Now, before we get started here on the questions and answers for the road test, and I do have a little presentation for you here that I will go over in terms of getting your learner's license because for those of you going for a road test, regardless of whether it's a passenger vehicle, a commercial vehicle, a fire truck, a dump truck, a bus, a coach, whatever it is, you have to do a learner's test first and then you have to go for a practical test. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And But first of all, <laughs> today is a bit of a milestone for Smart Drive Test, the YouTube channel, because today we're going to hit 10,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, which is absolutely awesome. So 10,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel today and a year ago on my birthday, uh, I was begging people for 100 subscribers and... Uh, this year we have a thousand so in a year we went from a hundred to a thousand subscribers and Esther just told me that she passed her driving test today that is awesome <laughs> that is absolutely awesome and she thanked me for all the tips uh, for her driving that is really great uh, that she is here with us today and passed her road test I'm sure she's just really high and I hope you have a really awesome celebration tonight take take the time out and have a celebration because that's really great and Sam from the Bronx in New York. Hey Sam, how's it going? That's great. Uh, so I'm by myself here today, so I may be looking back and forth at the other monitor here because on my other monitor I have uh, the comments here. So yes, uh, Venkstar, thanks for the 10,000 subscribers. No, thank you guys, because uh, I could not do this without you. Uh, there have been just brilliant comments on Smart Drive Test. Lots of questions, been able to help a lot of people. Uh, with the videos and uh, it just unbelievable how successful this has been and how many people have uh, found the information valuable and uh, you know information should not be kept in a box it really should be shared with people and helping people out I think that's really great so uh, yeah and uh, just uh, Sam there, he said, thanks for the shout out, not a problem at all. Um, if people are looking for driving lessons in uh, New York there, look up Sam, he'll be more than happy to help you. And uh, Sam, just remind me of the name of your driving school and I'll give you a shout out here. So, and thank you so much, Esther, that's really lovely. So if you guys have any questions at all, by all means, uh, drop them in the comment box. I'll do the best I can to answer them. And, Arush, ITA, I got my L luckily from Abbotsford, that is really great, got your L. And so the other thing, uh, one of the things that I will say in the presentation here today, get your L as soon as possible, especially for those of you in North America, in Canada and Australia, uh, because you want to have the, the clock to start ticking uh, on your L. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in the presentation because there is a waiting period that you have to have for your L before you can go into the novice phase of the GLP program, which is approximately about a year uh, that you need to have your L before you can actually go for your next part of your road test. It, it, and you don't necessarily have to practice because a lot of these licensing centers don't have uh, amount of practice that you have. Some of them will require that you keep a logbook on the amount of driving time that you've had. But the sooner that you can get that clock ticking, the sooner that year is going to count down and the sooner you're going to be able to move into the into the novice phase of your license. So that's really great. Uh, some tips to remember. Um, Rookie Auto Driving School. That's Sam's Driving School in the Bronx. So that's really great. So you can look that up. What's the best way to screen a good uh, driving school? I got my L and trying to pick one here in Toronto. Yes, picking a driving school. The first place that you go is go to Google. Uh, people leave ratings on Google and if the ratings are fairly good on Google, uh, you know that you're gonna be looking for a fairly good driving school. And as well, go in and talk to the staff. If the staff is friendly, then you know you're probably with a good driving school. If you've got the rating on Google, 
Plus, you go in and you get a good sense from them. You know that they're going to do well. As well, ask them what kinds of training they do because uh, some driving schools just do training for cars. But if they're doing specialty training, uh, they're training people with disabilities. They're teaching people how to drive with hand controls. They're doing some class four stuff. They're doing small bus and those types of things. Uh, that also shows that they have more skills than just teaching people how to pass a road test uh, in a passenger vehicle. So those are some good questions you can do and by all means uh, Google. I just uh, a couple of weeks ago I helped somebody on the on the channel here look for a driving school and I just went on to Google looked at the ratings on Google and I was able to come up with a really good driving school for them and I need to actually check in with her and see how she did because she was older and she had some concerns about stress and those types of things. So uh, Richmond BC have your road test on May 10th. That's awesome. Monday, uh, Ven Kate got her license on Monday. That is awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Willie asked me, what is this? Oh, today we have questions and answers for your road test. If you're going for a driver's license road test, uh, most of this is going to be passenger vehicle. But if you have questions about commercial vehicles, trucks and buses, I can also field those questions as well. Is it possible to get extra points? Extra points for what, uh, Ashimir uh, asked me. <laughs> I don't know what you're asking me in terms of extra points. To video uncontrolled intersections in residential areas. Michael, if I, uh, if I didn't respond, I, I do apologize. I do try and get to my comments as much as possible. Uh, uncontrolled intersections. Look at the video on turning. That does look at some uncontrolled intersections uh, in residential areas and that'll get you started. Uh, so when you look at that video on turning, it does uncontrolled intersections. And there's actually a playlist on the Smart Drive Test channel that uh, goes over and starts at uncontrolled intersections uh, on turning. And then it, it progresses to uh, complex intersections in terms of left and right turns. If the video doesn't answer all your questions about turning at uncontrolled intersections, by all means, get back to me and I'll make another video. What I'll do, uh, leave a comment on the channel or send me uh, an email at info at smartdrivetest.com and by all means, I'll send that link to the video for you. And if it doesn't answer your questions, then I'll make a more elaborate video for you. All right. Uh, Maple Ridge and my test is on June 29th. Any tips for Maple Ridge? Okay, road tests. Now, I'm just going to say this before I flip over to the PowerPoint presentation here. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. All road tests have four fundamental components. And those four fundamental components on a road test are speed management, space management, observation and communication. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter what class of license you are uh, taking a road test for. All road tests have those four fundamental uh, four fundamental components for a road test. Okay, so let's start with speed management. Speed management, there's three speeds that you have to maintain for the purposes of a road test. The first one is the posted speed limit. You have to do the posted speed limit and you have to uh, maintain a speed limit near or as close as you can to the posted speed limit. So that's the first one. The second criteria for a, a license test is the flow of traffic. If the flow of traffic is less than the posted speed limit, then you need to do the posted speed limit. And the third one, if you're driving a higher class vehicle or a larger vehicle or pulling a trailer, then the capability of the vehicle, especially if you're going uphill. A lot of times these bigger vehicles just won't do the speed limit. So posted speed limit, flow of traffic, or the capability of the vehicle, whichever is less. So that's speed management. The next one is space management. You can't get near anything, you can't get near other road users, and you can't get near fixed objects. And if you strike a fixed object on a road test, for example, you're backing into the space, the parking space at the test center, and you strike a concrete barrier behind you, that's an automatic fail. So when you're parking, stay out a little bit farther from the barrier, as opposed to backing up and not quite being able to back up. So space management is the next one. The third one is observation. You need to observe, you need to scan, you need to do shoulder checks and you need to do 360 degree scans before you do slow speed maneuvers and you back up. So observe and you need to scan intersections of railway crossings and any other place on the road test route that you may intersect with other road users. So that's 
observation and then communication you have to communicate with uh, other road users you have to communicate via your signals uh, appropriate hand signals don't tell other drivers that they're number one especially on a road test you probably won't be successful uh, lights signals headlights those types of things all of that communicates with other road users and the one most important uh, form of communication is the position of your vehicle on the roadway if somebody's in a left turning lane and they have their left turning signal on the fact that that vehicle is in the left turning lane is going to indicate to other traffic that you are in fact turning left so know that all right uh, to take extra road tests in drive test center outside bigger cities like Toronto is this true to pass easily not so much uh, okay, so Vengstar asked me if it's easier to take a road test outside a major urban center. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, driving examiners uh, sometimes know this. If they look at your driver's license, they know where you're from, and you're coming from a major urban center, and you go to a smaller rural town or a smaller town outside of the large metropolitan, uh, not necessarily. It depends on the driving examiner. And uh, I just did a video here on eight tips to pass your road test. Different driving examiners are different, and each one of them has their little quirks. And if they see on your driver's license that you're from one of the major metropolitan areas and they think, oh, you're just looking to pass your road test, it may or may not work for you. It may just be easier to do your test inside the major metropolitan area and, you know, do the best you can. If you practice, 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 and I always come back to this, practice as much as you can to pass your road test. The more you practice, uh, the higher chance of success you have. And again, one of the themes, if you watched my videos on my channel, is slow speed maneuvers. Go to the parking lot, go down to the local rental shop, hire some of those uh, pylons, those 36 inch tall pylons, the one meter tall pylons, go to a parking lot and practice your slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot. That way you don't have to get distracted by other traffic on the roadway and whatnot. And that will really improve your overall driving as well. Forward figure eights, reverse figure eights, straight line backing up, all of this will really improve your overall driving. So I cannot stress enough slow speed maneuvers. <laughs> do slow speed maneuvers and do them in the parking lot and that will really, really improve your overall driving. So, what else? Do we have anybody else? <laughs> uh, people post funny comments. All right, so we're going to get over to the PowerPoint presentation here, and we'll have a look at that. There we go. All right, so getting a driver's license, and as I said at, at the beginning of the presentation, Start your L as soon as possible. Go in and write your theory test and start it as soon as possible because if you're in a GLP program, uh, you're going to need to get the clock going as quickly as possible. The GLP program, the criteria for learner drivers, you have to be with a mentor. Uh, I know in the province of Ontario, you have to have a mentor that's 25 years old and have a minimum of four uh, years driving experience. And that four years driving experience is indicated by four dots underneath the picture on the driver's license in the province of Ontario and other places may be the same in terms of having a experienced driver with you. Uh, you have restrictions on passengers most of the time and, and of course wherever you are in the world in terms of your licensing authority make sure you look this up. Uh, oftentimes it's limited to immediate family. I know it is here in British Columbia immediate family grandpa grandma siblings mom dad and so it's immediate family that you're limited to uh, zero blood alcohol you can't have more than you can't have any drinks whatsoever uh, cell phone restrictions no handheld no hands-free cell phones for many drivers uh, there's often restrictions for night driving for new drivers uh, with an l a learner's permit uh, you can't drive between 1 and 5 a.m. in most places, and you're restricted to highway driving. I know in the province, again, coming back to the province of Ontario, you can't drive on the 401 or the QEW. Both of those are freeways. And some of the states in the U.S. might also have uh, restrictions on driving on interstates and those types of things. 
Once you graduate to the novice phase, that's the second phase uh, in Ontario, it would be the G2 uh, here in British Columbia. It's uh, the N phase in Australia as well. It's also the N phase uh, passenger restriction. You can only have one passenger in the vehicle that's not immediate family. Uh, you're restricted on cell phone use. Uh, so again, look these up at your local driver licensing center. Uh, zero blood alcohol, night driving, harsher penalties for moving violations. I'm just gonna have a look here and see if everything's working okay. Okay, DG is having problems with the gas, the throttle, we call it, the gas pedal. As I practice, do you think I can have on slippers on the road test? What can I do? Uh, DG, I would recommend that you wear running shoes and practice with running shoes. And again, send me an email, info at smartdrivetest.com, and I will send you the link for the video on speed control, which will show you how to get comfortable with the throttle, with the gas pedal, and, and improve that skill. Okay, can't see the slides. Okay, I don't know why that is. All right. I know why you can't see the slides. You should be able to see the slides now. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Can you see the slides now? When I click that, you should be able to see the YouTube presentation. Somebody just leave me a comment that you can actually see the slides. So you should be able to see the slides now. All right. Uh, novice presentation. The knowledge test. For the purposes of the learner's test, uh, you have to do multiple choice tests and for those of you doing uh, questions in Ontario, questions in British Columbia, there are, if you go to my website, uh, smartdrivetest.com and look in the menu on the side menu, there are practice driving test questions for passenger vehicles for British Columbia and Ontario. And for those of you in other parts of the world, those questions are more or less the same as they are in Ontario and British Columbia. So you can do those and practice for your knowledge test for your learners. Most learner's tests have less than 50 questions. Most of the time it's 35, 45 questions on the learner's test. And again, multiple choice questions. Practice multiple choice questions. And if you want uh, the video on doing your theory test, again, send me a link, uh, uh, an email, info at smartdrivetest.com, and I will send you the link for the knowledge test video on picking the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. The other thing about doing the knowledge test, Make sure you read all the choices before you make a selection because oftentimes the first answer that you think might or might not be correct is not the necessarily the correct answer. Okay, knowledge test, it includes signs, signals, and road markings, terminology, uh, painted islands, right of way, all of those types of things are terminology. So you need to practice for the road test because you need to understand the words that they're going to use in terms of uh, asking you questions on the knowledge test as well the driving task any driving test in the world is going to involve the driving task and the driving task includes the vehicle the driver weather light traffic and the road those six elements are the driving task and again there's a video on the YouTube channel that will talk to you about that all right yep I can see awesome yes we can see the slides now brilliant so I figured out <laughs> how to use the uh, open broadcast. Dorothy is here. Dorothy was the person that I found the driving school for in Toronto. Dorothy, how did, did, did that work out? Can you leave me a comment here and, and tell me how it worked out with the driving school in Toronto there? Because somebody was asking me about looking for a driving school in Toronto. Okay, just carrying on here with the slide presentation. Okay, so the knowledge test, the next part is the road test, four components which we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. Speed and space management. Uh, for speed, just quickly review this really quickly. Posted speed limit, flow of traffic, or the capability of the vehicle, whichever is less is the speed that you're going to travel on a road test. Now, one of the other things that I will tell you about a road test in terms of getting up to the posted speed limit, don't dawdle. If you're on a major road, like a multi-lane road, get it up to the posted speed limit as quickly as possible. Now, if you're in residential areas or you're in high pedestrian traffic areas, you're not gonna get up to the speed limit. 
and you have every reason to go slower than the posted speed limit. So again, that is something that if, and I recommend this with all students, if you're not taking driving lessons, go out with a driving instructor and do a mock road test because they will be able to help you with this speed management. Space management, one of the things I didn't mention when I was talking about space management in the introduction was is that you need, before you turn at any intersection, you need one lane of traffic between you and pedestrians. So make sure that you do that as well. And if you wanna see that video, there's a video on the YouTube channel that explains about how to turn and make sure that you have one lane of traffic, one lane of space between you and the pedestrian. Observation and communication, you have to observe the entire time that you're driving and you need to communicate with other road users what you were doing. And the other part about observe, ob observation, which I didn't mention at the beginning was, you need to be able to interpret and predict traffic patterns. And, you, and due to traffic patterns and being able to interpret and predict traffic patterns, you can determine what other vehicles on the roadway are going to do based on those traffic patterns. So that's one of the other things that you need to do. And in terms of observing, you need to uh, uh, become predictable on the roadway. And that's one of the things that's gonna prevent you from getting into a crash. So just go back here and have a look at the comments. Uh, when you back up, you have to use one hand and put the other hand on the seat. <laughs> Uh, Willie P. Games. Yes, when you back up, no, you need to look out the back window for the purposes of. You need to look up the back window for the purposes of the road test when you're backing up. So you just put, if you're on the left side of the vehicle, you put your right hand on the back of the passenger seat and then look out the back window. Now, one of the points of contention in terms of backing up, just Willie, uh, I'll say here, you don't have to wear your seatbelt when you back up. Now, some of you may be nervous enough that if you take your seatbelt off, you might forget to put it back on. That's the only thing that I caution you about. And if you are somewhere that you somebody said you can't take your seatbelt off, send me a, a note, uh, again, an email, because I will look it up in the Highway Traffic Act. I have only found one place in the world thus far in the Highway Traffic Act that they won't let new drivers take their seatbelt off while they're reversing and that's the state of New South Wales in Australia. Everybody else can take their seatbelt off when you back up. In the Highway Traffic Act it says you are exempt from wearing a seatbelt when reversing and again I just caution you as a new driver because if you're on a road test you're going to be nervous and you might forget to put it back on and you don't want to forget to put it back on if you do take it off but it does help you to move your body in the position that you need to move it so all good. Okay, uh, Dorothy, that's great. I started last week. The instructor's wonderful. Brilliant. That is, I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, which driving school did you end up going with, Dorothy? Can you just, because somebody else was asking in Toronto there about looking for a driving school. So, okay, carrying on here with the presentation real quick. Requirements of a road test, slow speed maneuvers. For the purposes of a road test, you can be asked any one of the slow speed maneuvers that you need to know for the purposes of road test. So that would be hill parking, uh, parallel parking, uh, three point turn, two point reverse turn, and all of those are on the video on the YouTube channel here that you can find all of those slow, slow speed maneuvers that you would be required uh, for a road test. Now, most road tests in the world are going to re require that you reverse stall park, reverse bay park you are gonna have to reverse into a parking space for the purposes of a road test. So that is the one skill that I can almost guarantee you that anywhere that you go in the world, you're gonna be required to do that for the purposes of a road test. When you show up for the road test, make sure you reverse into the parking space. That way when you start your road test and you're the most nervous, you can drive out of the parking space and after you get comfortable and develop some sort of rapport with the driving instructor, or the driving examiner rather, at the end of your test when you come back, uh, you can back into the space and you'll be more comfortable. Uh, you will need to be uh, knowledgeable about U-turns, but for the most part, you're not gonna be required to do a U-turn on a road test. Abilities, the basic skills that you're gonna need for a road test, you're gonna need two hands on the steering wheel, either hand over hand or hand to hand. Uh, some places in Europe require that you do hand to hand. Most places are hand over hand for purposes of controlling the steering wheel. There's a couple of videos again here on controlling the steering wheel. Stopping in traffic, make sure that you stop in traffic so that you can see the tires of the vehicle in front making clear contact with the pavement. That leaves about one vehicle space between you and the vehicle in front. Stopping at correct positions at intersections, so stop signs, there's three stopping positions at stop signed intersections before the stop line. 
before the crosswalk or sidewalk if there isn't a, a crosswalk line and as well uh, where the two roads meet. If there's no crosswalk line and there's no sidewalk or, or crosswalk lines, then it's where the two roads meet. Uh, dealing with controlled and under, uncontrolled intersections and giving the right of way. And most confusing giving the right of way for new drivers is going to be at roundabouts or four-way uh, four stop intersections. That's going to pose some challenges for you. Mentors, learning how to drive. And I'll just come back to this. I'm just going to check the comments here for a second. Uh, Global Driving Academy. So Dorothy A says that she is at Global Driving Academy with uh, driving and that's really great because that's the one we went with and they had a really good rating on Google. So Ashmere, what are some of the skills assessed on the road test? So that's what we're talking about. Excellent. Uh, look them up. So Venk Star, we got you going there on a driving instructor. That's really great. Okay. Excellent. Okay, I think we got all that. Brilliant. So learning how to drive, when you're on your learner's license, you're gonna need a mentor. You're gonna have your parents, your family, your friends. And again, go over to my website and there's a booklet, a small electronic booklet that you can download in a PDF form that will give mentors some information about how to help you drive as well. There's a video on the Smart Drive Test channel. If you wanna see that video on helping other people learn how to drive, uh, by all means go over there and grab, uh, watch the video and then go over to my website and sign up for my email and get that little booklet that will help you help a new driver learn how to drive so think about who's going to help you learn how to drive because there's a fair time commitment in it and again uh, in terms of driving to learn how to drive for new drivers i do recommend you get as much exposure to driving as you can in different uh, light conditions, in different weather, on different roadways, in different vehicles, get as much practice and as much exposure to driving as you can get because the more you can get, the better driver you're going to be overall. So driving lessons at driving schools, and this comes back to the question that I was asked about a driving school. Uh, there are packages that you can take with driving schools and you can take either just in vehicle lessons or you can take classroom lessons and uh, I do know that here in British Columbia we have a GLP package which includes I think it's approximately 20 hours of in class time which goes over a lot of the theory of defensive driving and how to control the vehicle and those types of things and then you can take uh, 10 hours of in vehicle lessons and individual lessons now if you're not going to take driving lessons and you're learning how to drive make sure that in approximately seven to ten days before your road test do a mock road test with a driving school so go to a driving school say to you i want to do a mock road test seven to ten days before your license test and go out and a driving instructor will be able to indicate to you uh, the skills that you need to strengthen before you go down for your test because the investment the return on investment of hiring a driving school to take you out for a mock road test is invaluable because they will be able to tell you at the level of whether your skills are going to be able to pass a road test or not. So I, I cannot stress that enough. Do a mock road test. Practice, practice, practice. Get as much practice as possible. I already talked about this. I kind of got ahead of myself. And practice in different environments. If you can drive in the wintertime, drive in the snow, drive in the bright, glaring sunshine, get as much practice as you can in different driving environments. So road test day, before you show up for road test day, get a good night's sleep. I know that you're gonna be pretty nervous, so <laughs> it's gonna be pretty hard. Here, we're just gonna check the comments here for a second and then we'll come back to this. Okay. Oh, got too far here. Uh, awesome questions. Now, Sam might be able to help me with this. Uh, Ashmere, I've been asked this before. Are you allowed to adjust your side view mirrors when you're parallel parking? Uh, Sam would probably be able to give me a better answer to that question now. I would, I don't know where you are in the world and different jurisdictions will have different answers to that question. Some driving school or some driving examiners may be annoyed if you stop to adjust your mirrors while you're parallel parking. Others may not. Uh, I don't recommend it um, because if you have to stop to adjust your mirrors, it's going to take extra time, one. And the other thing is, is 
parallel parking is really not about parallel parking. Uh, parallel parking is demonstrating that you have due care and control of the vehicle, which is what driving examiners want to see to assess your ability to drive. So, Ashmere, I'm going to recommend that what you do is call a local driving school. They will give you better information about that than I could, uh, sort of talking generally. Uh, I do know that here on YouTube, a lot of people who do uh, parallel parking videos, they do say, oh, adjust your mirror so you can see the curb and those types of things. Uh, I, I'm not a huge advocate of it. Uh, there's, there's lots of reference points in terms of parallel parking and those types of things. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm sorry, that's not a very specific answer. Uh, and you come up to a light and it's green but turns yellow. Should I go through or try to stop? Uh, which would mean hitting the brakes on a driver's test. Right. Austin, great question about yellow lights. Yellow lights are tough for any driver, regardless of class of license, it's tough. Now, what you need to know about vehicles, no vehicle will stop in its own length. So a passenger vehicle, a bus, whatever, they will not stop in their own length. So if you're one more than one vehicle length from the intersection, you're going to have to stop. Now, if you're within one vehicle length of the intersection, you're going to go through. Now, when you go through on a yellow light, make sure you're covering the brake and you're scanning the intersection as you're proceeding through the intersection. And again, this is uh, something that you would need to uh, work with a driving instructor and work with experienced drivers of working with yellow lights is because it's just one of those experiential things that unless you are working uh, with a driving instructor, it's just it's really tough to explain this to you over uh, live feed here. Sam said that he doesn't recommend moving his mirror, moving the mirrors for parallel parking either. Okay, and Sam echoes my feelings about moving your mirrors for parallel parking as well. Uh, some examiners are flexible about moving your mirrors and others are not, and that's exactly the, what I thought as well. If the driving examiner is in the vehicle, they want to try and get that test over as quickly as possible because they have a certain amount of tests that they have to do every day. I think they're allotted the road test, the physical road test is about 20 minutes. Uh, they're allotted about a half an hour to f start to finish to finish that road test and if you're taking extra time out to adjust your mirrors on a parallel park uh, I could see them probably getting a little bit annoyed so um, yeah again both Sam and I and as I said Sam's a driving instructor in the Bronx in New York we we don't recommend it so okay can I stay on the left side of the road due to parked cars Brandon, I think you're talking about residential areas. You might have to just clarify that for me. Um, you need to travel down the roadway where you're going to stay away from and have as much space management as you can. So if there's parked cars and you need to go onto the left side of the road and you cross over the center line, make sure that you signal and communicate to other road users. Even if there isn't uh, other vehicles and traffic there, make sure that you do that. So, uh, yeah, great question. Uh does one get access to the scoring report? Yes, um, most driving examiners will give you feedback at the end of your road test and they will go over the scoring sheet. And if you have any questions all about the scoring sheet, uh, ask the examiner. If you're going down with the driving school, the driving examiner as well will be able to explain that to you. Um, so they will give you, most driving examiners will give you feedback after your road test. So just getting back, just about finished up the presentation here. So road test day four, uh, in car, get a good sleep, bring your documentation. Uh, most driving centers, you're gonna need two pieces of uh, photo ID uh, with you. So make, and I suggest that you bring a third. Uh, bring your glasses. If you wear glasses for the purposes of driving, it will be a condition on your license and you will have to bring your glasses. Uh, if it's sunny, bring sunglasses because you know I know that some driving exam uh, instructors say that you can't wear sunglasses for the purposes of driving test. Uh, I say wear sunglasses. I am extremely photosensitive, and if it's a sunny day and I'm driving, I have to wear sunglasses or I simply can't see. I'm just squinting, and it's painful, and it causes me a headache. So I have to wear sunglasses. If it's sunny and you need to wear sunglasses, please wear sunglasses. Uh, I. I I don't know, maybe Sam will be able to confirm this as well in terms of wearing sunglasses for the purposes of a road test, but I do know uh, there are some driving instructors that will tell you you can't. Um, I don't agree. I, I think it's part of your personal protective equipment that you need for driving a vehicle safely. You'll need to bring money for your road test on road test day because <laughs> unfortunately they're not free. So make sure you bring money. 
uh, back into the parking stall at the beginning of your road test in preparation for your road test and when you're doing your road test follow the directions of the examiner the examiner will give you clear uh, instructions and they will give you ample notice they're not going to you know get right up to the intersection oh turn left here no they're not going to do that they're going to say at the intersection turn left and they're not just going to say intersection they're going to say at the controlled intersection turn left at the uncontrolled intersection or at the next intersection if when they say controlled intersection they're talking about stop sign yield sign traffic lights because they want you to figure out what kind of intersection you're dealing with and to see if you can deal with that appropriately and as i tell students again and again all you have to do for road test day is take the examiner's right away the, the examiner's way sorry you need to take away the examiner's right to fail you that's all you need to do for the purposes of a road test so on your road test good luck on your road test there we go and we'll see if we got questions perfect <laughs> Sam uh, Sam was saying that uh, some of his students, he starts to move the mirrors on them while they're parallel parking, and uh, he tells them to parallel park. So that's that's a great little fun that uh, driving instructors sometimes have with their students. Yes, we're we're culpable of toying with our students. <laughs> all right, so I think that's the presentation. And if you have any more questions at all, I'll stay on for a few more minutes here and answer any questions you have about a road test. And I, I hope that was uh, good feedback for you. I think it was good feedback and I think some people got it on. And by all means, you're more than welcome to leave me questions. Send me an email, info at smartdrivetest.com and I'll be more than happy to get back to you with any questions you have. Uh, I do, you know, a lot of the videos on the YouTube channel have been because of smart drivers leaving me comments and requesting videos. <laughs> and I'm doing the best I can to get all the videos done. Uh, I probably have uh, half a dozen that I need to do here because I have uh, smart drivers leaving awesome comments about information that they want for the purposes of passing the road test and information, not even not just passing a road test, information about what happens if they have a crash, information about what happens if the vehicle breaks down. And just on the note of uh, vehicles breaking down, I, I love this question because 20 or 30 years ago, uh, and, and Sam may be able to talk to this as well. Uh, 20 or 30 years ago, we, we all carried spare tires in our vehicles. We had a small tool kit. We had a tow cable. We had all kinds of things in case our vehicles broke down. Uh, and it was not unusual to see vehicles on the side of the road all the time with the hood up because the vehicle broke down. One of the things that I love about technology is, is that this day and age, it is rare that you see a vehicle on the side of the road with the hood up. They're rarely broken down anymore. Vehicles have become reliable, and not only be, be, uh, have they become reliable, our uh, roadside assistance programs have become much better. The AAA in the United States, the BCAA here in British Columbia, the CAA, the Canadian Automobile Association, all of these have roadside assistance programs, and these are really good. So breaking down on the side of the road is not the onerous task that it once was. So a couple of questions here. Uh, one lane road, there is barely enough room for two cars. I say this because cars that uh, want to turn right squeeze through. Is this allowed? Uh, they can squeeze through. Now what I suggest, oh, so Jacques asked me on a one lane road, there's barely enough room for two cars. Now. For new drivers, it can be a bit intimidating because you're not really comfortable with how big your vehicle is and how much space it takes. If you're if you're uncomfortable, and this is an excellent point for the purposes of a road test, if you are in doubt, in any sense of the imagination, if you are in doubt of something that's happening, and exactly what Jacques asked, if you're on a one lane road and somebody's trying to squeeze past you, stop. Put the brake on and stop. Do not continue to plow forward because if you plow forward, you're likely going to be unsuccessful on your road test. Whereas if you just stop, let the other vehicle go and have his or her crash somewhere else, then you've done the right thing. So if you're in the least doubt of a situation on your road test or any other time, as Jacques says here on a one lane road where people squeeze through, stop. Simply stop, let them go and then carry on. And that's what I recommend for you. 
Okay, excellent. Uh, Sam confirmed what I was saying about sunglasses for the purposes of a road test. If it goes on a sunny day and you need to wear sunglasses, wear sunglasses. But I have <laughs> been taken to task on that very point by other driving instructors that say that you can't wear sunglasses on a road test. Well, I disagree with that. I completely disagree with that. And like I said, I am extremely photosensitive and you will see me driving around in the vehicle. I have to wear sunglasses and I would rather have a student wearing sunglasses than having them squinting trying to drive the vehicle. <laughs> so wear sunglasses. Uh, okay. Yes, and Sam made an excellent point. Some people have those photosensitive sunglasses that they automatically turn to sunglasses as soon as it gets bright out. So if you're not allowed to wear sunglasses, uh, people wouldn't be able to wear those glasses that automatically tint when they get out into sun. Is the point system, uh, DG, are you, the point system, no, the, okay, I know what DG is asking me. DG is asking me about the point system for each jurisdiction. Each different state or province, because states and provinces are responsible for licensing as opposed to the, the, the federal jurisdiction. It's a provincial or state jurisdiction in terms of uh, driver licensing. Each one will have their own point system. They're more or less the same in terms of trying to make it a, a objective and the criteria is more or less the same. So uh, just know that how they code it on the form for the purposes of the driver's license test is going to be a little bit different. So again, if you're un, if you were unsuccessful on your road test and the driving examiner is giving you feedback and is looking, you know, pointing to the sheet and those types of things, and you don't explain it or you don't understand it, by all means, ask the driving examiner to interpret that for you because they can be fairly difficult to understand. As well, uh, all of these driving licensing centers will have a website and on that website somewhere buried in there I know that they will have a code to interpret the the, the feedback sheet that they will give you as uh, finishing up on your road test okay Willie P asked me this is a good question on a road test no you don't have to be perfect on a road test you don't have to be perfect on a road test you can make mistakes. You're allowed a certain number of mistakes on your road test. Now, and I said this in the last video on eight tips to pass your road test. They wanna know that the fundamentals of driving are in place. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for you to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes when I drive. We all do as experienced drivers. Driving is dynamic. It is incredibly difficult to be perfect. So you can make some mistakes but they want to see that the fundamentals are in place. Speed and space management, observation and communication. Those fundamentals have to be in place. You have to be able to have control of the vehicle. And that's the purpose of the slow speed maneuvers is that you have to have good control of the vehicle. If you have good control, you're going to pass your road test. And yes, you can make some mistakes. Moose Loose passed his road test. <laughs> that's awesome. That is really awesome. I love it when people come back and tell me that they passed the road test. That is so exciting and just really, as I was telling Sam there a couple of weeks ago, it just really fills my bucket because it just makes all of this worthwhile when people come back and tell me they were successful because that's really what we're about here is helping people to be successful. And, it, and you know, it's not just a road test. It's in life being successful. So when you pass your road test, it's really great. Uh, some sort of driver's insurance when you were on a learner's and practicing with an instructor. No, if you're pa practicing with an instructor now, uh, Venkstar, you're talking, are you talking about in a driving school vehicle? Because driving school vehicles have their own insurance for the purposes of you being in their vehicle. Uh, if you're driving your parents' vehicle or you're driving a friend's vehicle, you might get need them to make a phone call to the insurance company because some insurance policies will not let a driver under 25 years old drive the vehicle. So if you're driving your parents' vehicle or somebody else's vehicle, you might just need to make a call to the insurance company. Uh, now, just one other note. Okay, so, he's, so Bankstar is talking about a driving school. Yes, they have insurance. That's not anything that you need to worry about. Uh, they're all covered and, and whatnot. 
Uh, I was going to make another point. Now I forgot what I was making another point. Yes, and Sam confirmed what I said about you don't have to be perfect on a road test. If you make a mistake, just keep going, okay? And that's one of the points that I make about the purposes of a road test. Just, if you make a mistake, don't say anything about it. Just keep going. <laughs> because the driving examiner may not even have seen it, right? I mean, if you went a couple of kilometers or a couple of miles an hour above the speed limit and then you got it back under control, that's okay. You don't have to be spot on the speed limit all the time because if you're working the throttle and you're going down a bit of uh, a hill or something, sometimes it's going to get away on you. So, um, okay, Dengue was unsuccessful on his road test. So what I suggest to you is to look at the video here on driving fundamentals, go down and practice the slow speed maneuvers in a parking lot. And again, I really, really favor <laughs> the two by four exercise, which is you just go out to a local timber shop, buy an eight foot piece of two by four, two inches by four inches piece of wood, throw it down on the road, on the on the pavement in the parking lot. And when you can hit that consistently with the tires on the passenger side of the vehicle and the tires on the driver's side of the vehicle, and you can do that in forward and reverse, you're, you have fairly good skills with the vehicle. So go and do the two by four exercise and that will improve your overall driving and make it better. And it, uh, when in that video, you see me doing it, I'm used to backing up with the mirrors because I used to drive truck and I back up trailers and use the mirrors and those types of things. When I was looking out the back window, it was really tough for me to <laughs> hit that two by four. But as soon as I used the mirrors, I could hit it in reverse every time. So, uh, Lizelle. <laughs> okay, Lizelle, uh, send me a email and I'll send you some tips to help with that. Uh, because what I would suggest, and again, I suggest this again, anybody who's having, uh, being nervous about driving or has trepidation about driving, just practice the slow speed maneuvers, breathe, calm down. But I always, always recommend that you start out in a closed circuit area in a parking lot, where, someplace where there are not other road users and there's not other traffic and get used to the vehicle. Do not go out into traffic or residential areas, those types of things. Really start in a controlled area that you can get comfortable with the vehicle before you go out into traffic. Because if you get into traffic, it can just be too intimidating. And again, for people who are having difficulty with stress or are nervous with driving, again, find a driving school that does uh, driver retraining for people who've had a stroke or had a crash or something like that, these people, or work with seniors, that's the other thing, because these people are really good at working with people who have a lot of stress about driving. And I used to do that as well. I worked at a hospital doing uh, driver rehabilitation. And that is one place that you can start to try and reduce some of the stress level uh, in driving is just getting comfortable with the, with the vehicle and not having to worry about other traffic and those types of things. Okay, Jacques. On the way to the college, whenever I go on that road, you're always supposed to go under the speed limit in construction zones. However, I get tailgated and get scared. All right, uh, Jacques, I can totally understand that when other people are tailgating you and you have concerns about people behind you. Now, tailgating, you need to increase the space in front of your vehicle that way because when people are tailgating you, you're now driving for yourself and you're driving for the people behind you. And as my driving instructor, uh, Chris Doherty in Ottawa said to us, uh, when you're driving and people are tailgating you, uh, they, they need to wait for you. They, they have three choices. They can wait for you, they can crash into you, or they can go home. <laughs> and there was, there was some expletives when he said that. So just increase the space in front of your vehicle, breathe, know that other people are going to honk at you, other people are going to get impatient, but do what you're comfortable with and try not to get involved in what other people are doing because that's when you're going to get pressured and you're going to make mistakes and i and i talk about that time and time again it's called social driving driving is a social activity and unfortunately people get pressured by other people and oftentimes when they get pressured by other people that's when they get into trouble so try really hard not to be pressured by other people and just do what you're comfortable with okay uh <laughs> Lizelle, you can do it. I, I am convinced that you can do it. So uh, we're just wrapping up here. I'm just going to spend a couple more minutes. 
congratulations again to Moose Loose on passing his road test. If you have any questions at all, you have any requests, by all means, leave a comment on the YouTube channel here. I'm more than happy to answer comments. I try and answer comments every day. And just on that note, I'll just, I'll just finish with this. I try and answer everybody's comment within 24 hours. If I don't answer your comment, because uh, there's something a little weird <laughs> with the YouTube comment, every once in a while they get a little odd. Uh, I try and answer everybody's comments every day. So if I don't answer your comment, send me another comment, send me an email, info at smartdrivetest.com, and I will get your comment answered for you because I, I really try and get back to people. Uh, you are very welcome, Vinkstar, if we can do anything else for you. Uh, DG asked me what are some of the automatic fails on a road test. Some of the automatic fails on a road test, striking a fixed object. If you back into a concrete barrier, uh, that's an automatic fail. Uh, dangerous actions, <laughs> things that cause other people to crash are automatic fails. Uh, using a backup camera when you're backing up. You cannot use a backup camera for the purposes of a road test. You have to look out the back window. You have to turn around and look out the back window. So <laughs> know that you can't use a backup camera. Unfortunately, that's an automatic fail. Now, I have talked to people who have said hitting the curb on a parallel park is an automatic fail. Yes and no, okay? If you bump the curb, because you've done lots of work with your slow speed maneuvers and you have good control of the vehicle, bumping the curb is not an automatic fail on a parallel park. However, if you strike the curb, you back into the curb really hard or you put the tire right up over the curb, those are automatic fails. Anytime that you demonstrate that you don't have due care and control of the vehicle is going to be an automatic fail on a road test. Dangerous actions are going to be uh, deemed an automatic fail on a road test. Uh, cutting off other cars, those types of things. So those are types of things that are going to be automatic fails on a road test. But again, I come back to being successful on a road test, practice, 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 do your slow speed maneuvers and visualize yourself passing the road test and you're gonna be fine, okay? Uh, taking my road test in New Jersey, Okay, uh, so Ashmere, yes, you're taking your road test in New Jersey. Again, it comes down to knowing the road rules. The road rules in the states and other places are the same. And again, it's just those four fundamental components of a road test. Speed management, posted speed limit, flow of traffic, capability of the vehicle, whichever is less. Space management, not get near other road users, uh, other vehicles and one space, one vehicle lane between you and other pedestrians, uh, observation and communication. So observation, make sure that you're looking the whole time, you've got a scanning pattern in the vehicle, you're looking far down the road, you're looking close, you're interpreting traffic patterns and predicting what other road users are doing on the roadway, and communication, using your lights, your signals, appropriate hand gestures, don't tell anybody they're number one on a road test, and the position of your vehicle on the roadway all communicate to other road users what you're doing. So if you have those four fundamental components in place, plus you're able to execute the slow speed maneuvers for the purpose of your road test, parallel parking, two point reverse turn, reverse bay parking, which is basically reversing into a parking lot, uh, or into a parking space rather, uh, straight line backup, all those types of things, then you're gonna be really prepared for your road test. So those, that's what I say and that's what I come back to again and again. Would they fail you if you have to pull out to restart the parking test? No, uh, DG, you're not gonna fail if you have to pull out and readjust the vehicle. Uh, unless, unless it's excessive. Like if you do it one or two times, you're gonna, that's gonna be okay. If you do it five or six times, no, you're not gonna be successful because again, I come back to the fundamentals. Oftentimes it's not, it's not one thing. So say for example, a driving examiner says, oh, you failed because your turns were too slow. The driving examiner didn't fail you because your turns were too slow. Your, your driving examiner failed you because the slow turns that you made on your driving test indicate that your overall driving ability is not up to standard to pass the road test. 
and that's oftentimes why students don't fail so what I so again I come back to practicing slow speed maneuvers again I come back to practice 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 as much as you can in different vehicles in different driving environments and on different roadways because all of that will improve your overall driving and spending the time in the parking lot to practice your slow speed maneuvers is going to improve your overall driving faster you are going to become a better driver more quickly if you spend the time doing the fundamentals and again it comes back to anything any activity or anything that you want to learn if you're practicing the piano and learning how to play the piano you have to practice scales it's as boring as sawdust <laughs> it's as boring as sawdust we hate it how many people have learned to play music and have to play scales and oh my god it's so boring driving is the same if you go into a parking lot and you're practicing backing up you're practicing around corners it is so boring <laughs> but it is essential to being able to be a good driver and be successful on your road test and again spending the time in the parking lot will pay dividends huge 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 dividends in your overall driving you will be able to drive better and you will be able to deal with more traffic situations so and uh, practice the slow speed maneuvers do the time in the in the parking lot and again go on hire those pylons those meter tall 36 inch tall pylons and do reverse figure eights when you can do reverse figure eights and you can hit the two by four in reverse every time you're probably ready for your road test and to practice driving around on the roadways and whatnot Excellent, Dorothy A says she's gonna let us know how her driving lessons go. That's really great. Uh, that's awesome. So uh, we've been up almost an hour now, so I'm just gonna wrap up. And again, I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the smart drivers. 10,000 subscribers today It is just beyond my wildest dreams. Just a quick, <laughs> I started this a year ago. Uh, my birthday's in May, early May on May 6th and a year ago, I was begging people for two subscribers so I could have 100 subscribers on my birthday. At Christmas time, well, what happened last September in 2016 on September, I had two days of watch time. So for every minute of the day, people were watching two minutes of the video. So what I did between September and November, I made a video every day, six days a week until late November. And I, <laughs> anybody starting a YouTube channel, I wouldn't recommend to do that. However, my channel went through the roof. And at Christmas, I hit 3,000 subscribers. I put a goal in of 10,000 for my birthday, which I thought was like over the moon. Incredible goal. I thought there's no way by my birthday I'm going to hit 10,000. Well, we're a week before my birthday, and I'm going to hit 10,000 today. So thank you, Smart Drivers, for making this all possible and making this successful beyond my wildest dreams. And I believe the same thing about you and your road test, regardless of class. Uh, you can be successful, you're gonna do it. And great driving instructors like Sam in the Bronx there, uh, have a look at his stuff. He's doing really great work and a lot of driving instructors out there are doing really awesome work, working with new drivers and helping them to be successful on the road test. And that's what we do here, helping you be successful on your road test and helping you to be safe after you get your license because as we say in the driving instruction industry, the real learning in driving comes after you get your after you get your license because that's when you're on your own and you have to make the decisions and there isn't anybody there to help you uh, make those decisions so <laughs> so thanks again all the best everybody uh, thanks for showing up uh, this is really successful and again <laughs> these live events uh, these live events the first time i did a live event uh, it all went sideways the technology didn't work out but today i think the technology worked out really well and uh tomorrow is sam's birthday happy birthday sam <laughs> that's really awesome so tauruses that's that's a great astrological sign absolutely that's really great so I am going to have the just brilliant rest of my day. I'm going to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. And uh, yeah, and if you have any questions at all, leave me a message, leave me a note. More than happy to help you out. Check out uh, the website, smartdrivetest.com. There's practice driving test questions for those of you getting a learners over there. And by all means, drop me an email and uh, more than happy to help you out and get you going and uh, be successful on a road test. Good luck in your road test, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. 
Have a great day. Bye now.